going to the final. Let me know when I'm at the five minute. Okay, thank you. I forgot to tell you that earlier. Grace to you all and peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is and was and is to come. Welcome to God's Cup of Blessings Youth Ministries. The Ruach HaKodesh, also known as the Holy Spirit, is your host, and I'm your co-host, Shepherdess Catherine Hunter-Williams. Young people, we are still moving forward through our transition from one production company to another. So please pardon our dust. We're under new construction and instructions from our Father God. We will be tweeting, tweaking it, John. Is it tweaking? I guess it's tweaking it as we go along. So just be patient with us. All right. As I said to you on our last program, we will no longer be coming to you on Friday evenings anymore. We have moved God's Cup of Blessings Youth Ministries to allpointstv.com, which will present our program on Comcast Channel 17 every Sunday evening starting at 930. One more time. We will no longer be coming to you on Friday evenings anymore. We have moved God's Cup of Blessing broadcast to allpointstv.com, which will present our program still on Comcast Channel 17, but it will be coming on, on Sunday evening starting at 9.30 p.m. Before we go any further, let us pray. And, and I'm sweating, so i got to wipe the sweat off, so excuse me for a minute. It is a little warm in here, John, no matter. I guess our conversation got me going. Got me a little warm up in here. But it'll be all right, Lord. Hell, it's a woman's thing. All right, moving forward, let us pray before we go any further. Hallelujah. If I can get my glasses on right, okay. Hallelujah, my Lord Jesus Christ. Bless you, my Lord. My Lord, let me lift up your name to our young people today to let them know how much you love them and want to give them rest through a new and wonderful life in you. Smite the loins of those who rise up against me and fight my foes and strike them down until they rise no more. As always, move me out of the way, Holy Spirit, and give me a fresh anointing to do my Father God's will on this day. Let your young people know that salvation belongs only to our Lord Jesus Christ and no one else. And I thank you, my Abba God, which is also known as Father, for giving me another day and opportunity to fulfill your purpose in my life. In your all-powerful, wonderful name, Shua HaMashiach, also known as Jesus Christ. I do use a little Hebrew as we go along because I just feel there's a lot of more power in using Hebrew because in Hebrew the the one word can mean several different words also with the, with the the language of Greek so sometimes I use a little Hebrew I lose a little use a little uh, Greek also in the name of Jesus so but I will let you know also known as okay Shua HaMashiach also known as Jesus Christ Abba God Father God Abba is Father all right, all right. Moving forward, young people, there is a battle for your mind. But remember, the victory is yours because our Father God fights all of your battles when you submit your life to Him. We know the control of your life is sometimes hard to give up, and that's for anybody. Um, we call this a self-effort move. When you don't want to give up your life, you just want to do everything. You think you can do it all by yourself, but not you can't. You can't do it by yourself. Uh, I can't even do it all by myself, but I know calling on the powerful name of Jesus will control the situation no matter what it is. Just call on his name, Jesus, and watch how the situation change. He will not lead you down the wrong path. Our Father God promises you in Psalms 23 and 6, and you can uh, read and speak it at a, at a later time, that His goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. Hallelujah. Did you know in Matthew 4, 11, 1 through, I mean, sorry, excuse me, Matthew 4, 1 through 11, when Jesus was in the wilderness, 
that when you read read these scriptures, you will see the devil always leave out a word in each one of them. The one word he leaves out is beloved. If the devil didn't want Jesus to know that our Father God loves him and he is his son, don't you know the devil does not want you to know that our Father God loves you? Remember, the devil is the father of all lies. Our Father God loves you and sent his son Jesus to save you. Scripture in the Bible, in the Old Testament and in the New Testament is all about the great truth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. New covenant of grace. And remember, he's always standing by you. And if you have not given your life to him, he's waiting for you to come to him right now. Amen. All right, moving forward. I love to say that moving forward because sometimes people can get stuck in a certain place and they just there. I also like to use the word through that I'm going through. And that's my key word. I'm going through, not getting stuck. So we are moving forward in our program and in our transition. And we are hoping that we will be on July 31st, that last Sunday of the month, at 930. So please tune in and watch us and spread the word that we have moved, but we're still here for our youth. And we will always be here for our youth because they need the Lord just as well as anybody else. And they're not pretentious. They are very real with their feelings and they want to know the truth. And we have not been told the truth by some of these preachers up in there that's been up there just getting up there telling us stuff but has not given it, given it to us in context or as context means in the truth the truth of the scripture you can take a scripture and use it and just blow it away or another thing preachers are doing they condemn so does the congregation especially the older people and young people young people are just some of them up in the church they think they have arrived but they haven't you know and you just have to have patience with some of our youth we want them to come into the church we want them to give their lives to the Lord we know that the Lord will give them rest we know that some of them can come to the church door and they get turned away. Or they'll say, you in my parking spot, you got to move your car. There is no specific parking spot. Or you in my seat, there is no specific seat. Never turn anybody away. The Lord will clean them up. If the girl come in there with a short skirt on, the Lord will clean her up. He will have her. He will change her mind. That's what repenting is, changing your mind. And she will start changing her mind and also her dress. The Lord will provide her the funds to buy better clothing. The Lord will change you. He has The Holy Spirit is within you. And once you give your life, get baptized and whatever, you activate the Holy Spirit. The Lord gives us free choice. You know, we could go with him, we for him, or we're not for him, one or the other. If you're for him, he will help you. He will provide for you. He will protect you. He will love you and your family. And through you, your family can get saved. Your family will be blessed. Friends will be blessed. He blesses you to bless others. So, don't turn nobody away, not especially our youth and we trying to get them in the church to work for the Lord, to be a disciple of the Lord. Hallelujah. Get them. Don't come about my seat. This is my seat. No, there is no specific seat. Just move over. Say, excuse me. Don't just make them get up and leave. I see them. And when they turn them away at the door, though, that really hurts when they say you can't come in here looking like that. Yes, you can. Father God said he accepts you however you are. He will meet you where you are. So please don't turn our youth away. Okay. Like I say, he's waiting for you to come to him. Amen. Let's get caught up from our last program. We spoke about our transition from one production company to another. AllPointsTV.com Which will continue to show our broadcast on Channel 17 on Sunday night starting at 9.30. And as I said before, we hope our program will be up and running by July 31st. We spoke about God's cup of blessings, youth ministries, mission coming from the scriptures, John 4, 25, and 1 Corinthians uh, verse, I mean, chapter 10, verse 16, and becoming the becoming of a new person in Jesus Christ. 
that Jesus Christ does not condemn anyone. That's what I'm talking about. See, those people that come to the church, to the door, and you tell them they can't come in there looking like that, that's condemnation. Jesus does not condemn anyone. Uh, how to truly feel the love of our Father God in your life, and you will feel his love. When he touches you, it goes all over you. How the truth of the grace of Jesus Christ will make you free. <coughs> Excuse me. The Lord Jesus is your good shepherd, and that death and life are in the power of your tongue. On our last program, before we before our transition, we studied scriptures about did our Father God really forsake Jesus up on the cross? We have always been taught that our Father God had forsaken Jesus Christ up on the cross, especially during Resurrection Week. And the reason I got to go back to that, because I was in the midst of, of, of doing that, and you can go to Psalms 22 and you'll see what I'm kind of talking about. Because, um, and I'm getting ahead of myself. But that's where I was before I went into the transition. And we was talking about the truth about what Easter is about and all the different things and points and whatever they use. And also that we have been really taught wrong. People just, I've learned about Jesus Christ's grace. I'm not under the laws anymore. I am under the grace of Jesus Christ. That is my Savior. That who is, he is through his grace has changed my life. And as I always have said, I never, ever thought I would be doing this. Sitting up here talking and trying to get studies going on about the truth. Putting everything in context so we can get a clarity or clarify the scriptures. Because we have, for, ooh, this is hundreds of years we've been taught so wrong. We're not under the laws, people. Jesus Christ came in the New Testament and he gave us truth and grace. We are under his grace. And I'm trying to hope people get to that. That is what the, the, uh, the I'm a, I want to say, not say grace revolutionist, but I am uh, under his grace. And I love being up under his grace because Jesus, oh my God, he sees it's he came to save us. He came. He stepped out of eternity. And I'm still getting ahead of myself. He stepped out of eternity to come and save us. And he came with a whole total different point of view. When Malachi closed, the book of Malachi closed, the heavens was closed up for hundreds of years before Jesus Christ came. And it was like the Lord to me was up in heaven and he was saying, uh, I love my people. I don't want to let them go. I want to still save them and bring them to me. I want somebody to go down there. But it also, in order for remission of sin, there must be a shedding of blood. So Jesus knew why he came to the earth. He knew he came. He came to die. He knew he came to re, uh, forgive us of our sins. He also knew he came with the truth and the grace. And that we're not under the laws anymore. That we're under his grace. If you... Jesus is all through the Bible. He's in the Old Testament, all the types and shadows, certain things in there that let you know that this was Jesus. All through Old Testament, it points to Jesus. And then when the New Testament came, there was Jesus. It's all about Jesus. But remember this too, that Jesus came for the Jews. It was Paul who gave uh, salvation and grace to uh, not salvation, but grace and about Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, which is where we fall because I'm not a Jew and I'm not under Judaism. Judaism is the laws. That's what Jews, some of the Jews are still practicing today. And there's a, that's another study, but we're going to leave that alone for because we're moving forward in what we were talking about. And I just keep getting ahead of myself. <laughs> Forgive me. But I got so much to say and I want to kind of wrap this uh, this study up because we've been doing this study for a while and move it forward and go uh, to where we want to go and get this because I wanted us to get to Psalms 22 so we can see Psalms 22 and then see what's going on in Matthews where Jesus said my God my God why has thou forsaken me and it's just some great points in there okay so let's move on let's move on let me see uh, my Father God has been enlightening my understanding of the true meaning and the context of our Father God's word regarding this scripture, Matthew 27, 46. 
It's all about telling the truth about our Father God's word in context, which means to clarify the true meaning. Don't just get up there and take a scripture and not research it out or whatever the Holy Spirit gave me. Yeah, but the Holy Spirit going to give you the true meaning of it. Not get up there and have uh, tell the people half the truth. Because I don't think this is the first time I have seen anyone go to Psalms 22 from Matthew 46. And you, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me shut up. Okay, let me shut up. Our study today, and we will, if we don't finish today, we will finish it on our next program. But it's, it's, it will be about that some of you young people don't really know why Jesus died up on the cross and that the debt for your sin was paid in full. When you truly begin to realize this, when you truly begin to realize this, you will be free. And you will be free indeed. Excuse me. Not just free, but indeed. Amen. Today we're going to focus on Psalms 22. Uh, verses 1 to 31. And like I said, if we don't finish this program, we're going to finish this because I want to get this, this truth out. We study some of the Old Testament prophecies of how Jesus would frequently test people to prove the intentions of their heart. For example, the woman at the well. And you can read and speak this later. And I always tell you to speak the word of God because when you're speaking it, you're hearing it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. All right. <clears throat> and also get your pads and pencils out because I'm going to give you scriptures to back up my study. I do not just want you to sit up here and say shepherdess Catherine told me this or shepherdess said that. You will go to the word and see it for yourself. You will see it in the word of God. I'm not just coming up here just out of my left field coming in here saying anything. I give you scripture. So get your pads and pencils out and remember to speak as you read the word to speak the word. Okay. The example of the woman at the well is in the book of John 4 and 18. Like I said, you can read that later and speak it later. Okay. So I'm going to go to John 4:18. And it's something that uh, John over here at All Points TV told me that I could also start be putting the scriptures on, on the screen. So we're going to be doing that too. Like I say, be patient with me. Uh, just pardon our dust because we're under construction. But it's all going to be well because it's all going to be done the way the Lord wants it done. In spite of me, it will be right. Hallelujah. Okay, we're going to John 4, 18, the woman at the well. I got to get there. Uh, I got to be a little bit more um, studious. John 4, 18. My Lord. Okay, forgive me, Father. We're going to get this right. John 4, 18. The woman at the well. Like Jesus, like I said, Jesus would will test you to see where your heart truly is. Okay, I'm going to have to get more organized over here. Um, because this is a new desk and everything. And I'm going to have to put myself in order. Because I, some stuff, I just, I'm all over the place. But anyway, let's go back to John 4 and 18. John 4, 18. And I'm going to speak it. If you are there... Speak it with me. And it's okay, go to 15. And then where the woman said, please, sir, the woman said, give me some of that water. Then Jesus is talking about the living water. That I'll never be thirsty again and won't have to make this long trip out here every day. And he told her to go and get her husband. Okay, that's the test right there. He will test you to see the intentions of your heart. She said, but I'm not married, the woman replied. And I'm reading from the uh, Living Bible, the Life Application Bible. I like reading from that because it speaks in our language today. And actually, this Bible was written way before King James Bible came out. And it's in this type of English, what we're speaking today. It's not the these and those and the thous. And it's much more easier to understand. And it's by Tyndale. So if you want to get you a new Bible, get you the life, get a life application Bible by, I think it's Tyndale Williams or William Tyndale. Okay, let me go a little further. She, she told Jesus, but I'm not married. And the woman replied, and Jesus said, all too true. 
for you have had five husbands and you aren't even married to the man you're living with now. <laughs> That's something. Sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet, but say, tell me, why is it that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the holy place of worship while we Samaritans claim it is here at Mount Gerzim where our ancestors worship? Now, that's another study. I wanted you to see this part about where Jesus will test the intentions of your heart. Because she said, uh, but I'm not married. And Jesus said, all true, because she, he knew she wasn't married before he even started talking to her. And what's so funny about it is Jesus had to go to Samaria. The Samaritans, I, that's a whole nother story, and it's going to take up my time. So I'm not going to go through about the history of the Samaritans and why Jesus had to deal with them. But she was actually the first evangelist because after she spoke to Jesus, she ran back to her city and said, I found a man that knew all about me. So she was the first one who talked about Jesus. They'll say it was Mary Magdalene, where well, she was one of them, but it was uh, the Samaritan woman. Okay, I'm going to have to stop here. And next time I come in, we'll co uh, next time we come in to uh, finish up on this program, uh, we got to go to the uh, study of Psalms 22 to see if our Father God had really forsaken Jesus up on the cross. All right. Okay. Let's go to this last part of my program, which is really why I'm here, is for our youth and to offer them and encourage them and invite them to salvation. All right. Young people, did you know that Jesus Christ stepped out of eternity and into our world to save sinners, which I had told y'all earlier, and that he will meet you wherever you are? Let Jesus Christ deliver you from the clutches of Satan today. Today, young people, I encourage and invite anyone who is not saved and wants to give their life to Jesus to come to him today. I want you to know, young people, that this is the day and time to make your decision and receive Jesus Christ into your life. Don't wait until tomorrow because if I stated so many times before, tomorrow might be too late. Jesus is waiting for you and he's surrounding you right now. you listening to this program. He's surrounding you right now as I'm speaking to you. Run to him now, young people. I guarantee you that your life will change for the better. Come out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. To give your life to Jesus Christ today, <clears throat> excuse me, speak this simple prayer with me and begin a whole new and wonderful life in Christ Jesus. Become a new creation, a new creature, or as I call it, a new human, a, 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 a new human being, a new creature. That's what they call it in the Bible. You become a new creature. But I say your whole life changes. You change. Your mind changes. Everything changes. Okay. This prayer is per para paraphrased by me. and comes from the book of Romans 10, 9 to 13. If you're ready, put your hand across your heart. Because I believe it is like we're making a pledge to Jesus Christ. <coughs> To Jesus Christ because uh, you're going to give your life to him and that means you're committing and submitting to him so put your hand across your heart and say this with me dear Jesus I believe in my heart that you died for me and that you raised me from the dead on the third day I confess to you that I'm a sinner and that I need you in my life I need your love and forgiveness of all my sins. I confess, as of right now, you are my Lord and Savior of my life. And I thank you, my Jesus, for saving me. Amen. That's all it takes, young people. A simple confession with your mouth, and you are saved. Now, get your Bibles off the shelf. <coughs> Dust them off. And open them up and ask our Father God to show you Jesus Christ in his word and let him become the center of your life. Begin to experience his presence with you always. Remember in 1 John 4 and 4 it says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And the battle is not yours anymore young people, it's the Lord's. 
Romans 8.31 says, If God be for you, who can be against you? There is nothing impossible with God. If you are new, if you are new in Christ or a backslider and you're not in a church, find a Holy Spirit filled full gospel church that does not preach a mixture of laws and the grace of Jesus Christ. John 1 and 17 says, For the laws were brought by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Today, as I said earlier, we do not live under the laws of Moses. We live under the new covenant of the grace through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ redeemed you from the curse of the law. He paid a heavy price for your freedom. Until next time, young people, continue to stand on our Father God's word and promises. Stay free in our Lord Jesus Christ. Never become discouraged, give up, nor quit. Because in the end, the victory will be yours. Now, young people, let Jesus supernaturally, divine grace, and his glorious countenance shine upon you and your family always. Remain relaxed. Relaxed and rest in his finished works that he provided for you on the cross. And let his shalom, peace be with you always in his powerful and mighty name, Jesus Christ. Amen.